Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we got a service called for a walk-in refrigerator. You can see on the door thermometer we are past 60 degrees. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have a service call for a walk-in refrigerator. Definitely feels warm in there. A couple of things I noticed right away. We are above 60 degrees inside here. I noticed this control kind of just, wow, hanging, not plugged into anything. So I'm assuming that's useless. And we do have both fans operating. Here's our thermostat here. Then over here, this is a split system. I don't hear the condensing unit running at all. This is the condensing unit up here. All right. This is a water cooled unit. I'm gonna need to get some light in here. There's a water cooled condenser back there. And that's just a couple things that I noticed right away. Let's go ahead and get some light in here. It's super dark. And let's see what's going on. All right, I've got a drop light. Quick tip, always run your cord, especially over a doorway where you're not gonna be in anyone's way. So, let's see what's going on here. We have a potential relay and two capacitors. One start, one run. I see here we have a low pressure control. Down here is a water regulating valve for a water cooled condenser. This is, yes, a split system. There's our filter dryer with the side glass. Honestly, this compressor looks pretty good. Compressor is warm. It's pretty hot, actually. I'm about 98 degrees. I said this is well over 100. So this thing is trying to start. It should be running right now. We both have, we have both fans running. So that's good. So whatever's going on, there's a good chance the issue is here. Well, I turned off the camera. I heard this try to start. I heard like a little buzzing sound and then nothing. So, and it is hot. So I am assuming there is power coming in, but we're going to confirm that we have the proper voltage. So here's the voltage coming in. Always try to find whatever info you can. I did notice this and it says Jane. That's the name of the place. This is a hotel and uh, has a starter run capacitor with the potential relay and it seems to be the circuit that we're working on. So it's always good to have that. But honestly, I don't need that. I kind of just go around and, you know, see what's going on. I'm gonna start with putting on some pressure probes. I specifically use the probes and not the gauges with hoses at an initial service call so we don't lose refrigerant. When you, when you put the gauges on, you always lose a decent amount of refrigerant that gets stuck in the hose. Right there. Just heard a little and it just shut off. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. I also noticed that this tube for our low pressure control was sitting right here. And let's see if I get a picture of that little burn out here wonder if uh, it actually opened up yet so everything could contribute so here's our low side right this is the larger pipe of suction and then here's going to be our high side back here so let's go ahead and see what's going on there all right so we are equalized at about 40 psi regardless of the refrigerant it seems low on top here it says r12 we don't use that refrigerant anymore so the replacement for that is 134A. So we're using refrigerant 134A with about a 40 pound standing pressure, which is low. But this is a water cool system and the water is extremely cold. I, I would say that. But let's go ahead and see what's going on here. All right, when there's nothing going on in a case like this, I definitely wanna make sure there's power coming in. So the power comes in through here, follow this in here to a little terminal block. So we're gonna go from L1 to L2. 
All right, so we have our 208. We got our power coming in. Got the cover off this pressure control. Could that be holding us out? One leg to ground, 120. Another leg to ground, 120, okay. Cross, we have zero. So the switch is closed, so that's not holding us out. And we do have power coming in. Let's see what's going on. I did hear this thing like try to do something, so I'm assuming the thermostat is calling. And we might have an issue with starting. And um, these capacitors look a bit worn out. So let's see what's going on. Why are we having trouble starting? All right, so I just found the breaker to turn this off. I did turn it off. We do have power coming in. We got our 208. We know it's not our pressure control holding us out. One thing I do want to check, because I did hear this thing trying to like, trying to go. I want to see what's the ratings we have on our capacitors. I'm going to start by discharging it. Just going across the two terminals. Okay. If you haven't watched my video on how to discharge a capacitor and check one, I'm going to leave that in the video's description as well as you will see a pop up. So let's do that and isolate and check. All right, so this one is rated for 130 to 158. This is the starting capacitor, and we're having trouble starting, so I'm going to check that one first. Put my meter to capacitance, and it's pretty simple to check these. Kind of just go across them and give it some time. So 13.3, and it's not moving from there. So right now it's telling me that this stuck capacitor is bad. So, all right, that's a clue right there. Let me just confirm that by restarting my meter. Let's see what happens. Hmm. All right, well, it's still giving me that same reading. We got 13.3 microfarads. So right now this needs to be replaced. That's for sure. Let's go ahead and check start uh, the motor run capacitor all right so here's the run capacitor it says 15 microfarads plus or minus five percent stand this up so no feedback man these things are completely out 0.8 microfarads i mean both these things are terrible no wonder this compressor is not starting all right it's just a little thing that I do, just so just you know I know I'm 100% right. 0.8 microfarads. All right, so both of these star capacitors are bad. From here, I would actually start with this. I would start with this because I heard this turn on. There's a good chance that the relay is doing its job and everything is calling. And the issue that we're having is starting. So these two are my suspects right here. So both of these need to be replaced. I gotta see what I have in my truck. All right, so I have the same exact run capacitor with the same manufacturer. I do have the same manufacturer for the run, for the star capacitor. The ratings are just slightly off. So this one here is 130 to 158, minus 160 to 193, so. It's a little bit off, but there's no supply shops open right now. It's already, we're in the evening already, and they're going to have an event tonight. So let's do what we can to hopefully, you know, get this going. So we're just going to test these quick and throw them in there. All right, so let's check this one first. This is 15 microfarads. You see we have 15 on the dot. This is actually perfect. Double check this one. 192 all right capacitors are good I'm gonna go ahead and swap them out and uh, see what happens all right I got those two new capacitors in there and they are strapped down Here's the old ones all right while I'm here I'm gonna take a look at the connections here Oh man, they should do, but they look pretty bad. I'll take a picture for a better look. And what is that wire not doing in there? 
Sheesh. Oh wow, look at that. It just started. 15 back pressure, seven, five, just shut off. I know those pressures were low. So it must've went off on low pressure control right now. It did start though. And now it's equalizing. Once the pressure comes back up, it's gonna start again. Oh, right there. All right, well, rest assured it's about a cutoff. Man, 55 pound back pressure. This water's freezing. But we did get it to start. I'm so happy for that. From here, okay, <laughs> shut off. From here, you know, let me turn this off. This thing has a refrigerant leak. That's what's going on here. All right, as you can see, we are equalized at 40 pounds again. I knew that was low from the beginning. So we got a couple things going on here. Power is now off. These terminals for the compressor, terrible. So I would replace the solderless connectors. You know, honestly, I would redo some of this wiring just so it's neat, right? And, you know, you're really not supposed to just top off the system when you know there is a leak. This is my first time working on this, so I am not sure how much refrigerant and how much amount of time has been lost because there are exceptions. But right now, let's do the right thing. And I'm gonna end this service call here. So we found out why the system is not starting, but now we have other issues. So the next issue is going to be to search for this leak, repair it, you know, put it in a good vacuum, remove all the moisture, and charge it with new refrigerant and test everything. Until then, I'm gonna do the right thing and uh, at least for now and end this here. And I will make that a separate video. So that's pretty much how I went about this call. You know, just gotta go with the symptoms, gotta go with the symptoms. I had a good feeling it was those over there. We learned how to check them. I'll also link a video so you guys can see an in-depth and in detail and in a good scenario where you can check these properly and yeah just a couple key things and right here i'm already noticing some oil stains <laughs> so that could be something right there and i noticed that this filter dryer has a flare connection those leak all the time so now to recover the refrigerant you know find and replace the and repair the leak also when you open the system you're going to want to replace that filter dryer and that's pretty much it so that was this service call and yeah, if anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.